Okay, um, we're back. Uh, welcome to our kitchen one more time. We've got some great things to do with y'all today. Uh, we've been working off this um, sourdough starter that uh, I started four days ago. You guys should be on day three. But John's going to give you a look of what mine looks like today on day four, this bubbly mass. And so every day you're supposed to be um, taking half that mix out and adding a cup of flour and half a cup of water, stirring it up and, and leaving it out. And you're creating your own starter, sourdough starter. But eventually we're going to make a really delicious like country sourdough bread with that. So today I just wanted to show a couple things that I've been doing with that extra starter because why waste? Um, and it also enhances the baking that you're doing. Um, so today we are going to make um, this apple crumb, apple cobbler crumb topping. Now this is a original Rainbow Gardens recipe for the crumb topping and at the end of the video you'll have to hop over to our YouTube channel to get that uh, coveted recipe for that. But I'm going to show you how we put this together. And then um, I made this pie dough out of the uh, sourdough starter, I used my grandmother's recipe and I altered that a little bit. So I was gonna go ahead and make a pie, but this is like the only pie plate I have in my house and I'm not really interested in eating out of that. So I think I'm going to show you how to roll it out and put it into um, this cast iron pan. Um, you could also do some small things and make small apple cobblers or small apple pies. And this is a Pampered Chef pan. I'm also going to include on our YouTube channel a link to um, a Pampered Chef site that's run by Lisa Miller. She's a, a Pampered uh, Chef. She has a virtual party this month, and the money for that is going to Feed America. So I'm going to leave that link up on our YouTube channel, too. You guys might want to check that out. And she has a store that you can go to if you're at home and you want to make stuff and you don't have the equipment. I'm sure there's plenty of um, Pampered Chef things there that you can play with. So to make the apple cobbler um, filling, I like to use both red and green apples because you get the sweet from one and you get the tart from the other. And um, I'm just going to go ahead and peel those up. And we're gonna, I love these peelers, they're these straight, firm grit peelers. We're going to um, save all the peelings from this because uh, if you don't know us, we have uh, chickens in the backyard and they love to have a treat, especially this time of year. Um, we're not running back and forth at the feed store as much, so we're trying to give them some treats from our kitchen um, and keep them happy out there. And they keep giving us eggs that we're baking with and having breakfast with. So I'm gonna just do a couple of these. I did some of these earlier so I could get this cobbler going for you. And then I'm gonna show you a really quick way um, to cut them. This is something that the kids could do too. You could have the kids come in and peel these apples up for you and develop some dexterity in their fingers, get off those handheld devices. So I just go around and cut the apples off. Flat surface cutting, saving the cores for the chickens. Okay, and then I'm going to go a flat surface, fingers behind the knife blade so I don't catch them in there, and slice them. I'll go slow this time so you can see. I've got my fingers tucked behind that knife blade, and the knife is running down the side of them, so I'm not going to catch the finger pads as I go through this. But I like them sliced in apple pie and cobbler. You're welcome to dice them if you like them diced. Um, some people make apple pies with raw apples, sugar, and flour. I prefer to par cook or pre cook mine for apple pie um, and get the right consistency before I go into the oven with that. So we're going to move over here, John, to this pan. Um, I'm going to toss these apples in here with a little bit of butter. A little bit of butter. A lot of butter. Delicious. To that, I'm going to add sugar and cinnamon and apple juice. If you don't have apple juice, you could use water. I also have this leftover Angry Orchard uh, hard cider from the other day when we made. Um, I'm going to put that in there. See what that brings to it. And you're going to cook these down until they're semi soft, which is what these are back here. All right. And to this liquid in here, 
When they get to the semi soft, you're gonna see all this liquid that comes out of the apples. We're gonna take a mix of cornstarch and water, and you mix it up in a bowl, and you make this like slurry, cornstarch slurry. And when you add this to your boiling, make sure your liquid is boiling. Again, you want to get to the semi soft stage, boiling liquid. You're going to add this cornstarch mixture, and you'll see that it's going to thicken up. Let me push this out of the way. It's going to thicken up the juices. This is how you get that apple pie filling that you're probably familiar with, you know, in a can. But that's a lot of starch that they add to it. We're just going to put this cornstarch mix in. More apples than that. It's going to give us the consistency that we're looking for for our apple pie. I'm going to combine these two now because those other ones too. This is about enough for pie. I'd say uh, this would be four of each of those small, medium small apples. All right, so we're not going to cook this all the way to do a pie, but if we were going to do the, the apple cobbler, like the little cobblers that we did, we would get it more soft because what I did with those was I cooked the crumb topping ahead of time on a sheet pan. So I got the apple filling soft and warm and I have the crumb topping already cooked and I'm just going to combine those two things into a casserole dish. But since this is going to be a pie in the oven, I'm going to leave it partially baked like this and the apples are going to continue to bake in, in the oven. The rest of the baking is going to get done in the oven. So we're going to leave that to cool so that we can put it into our pie crust in a little bit. And we're going to move on to, this is what it would look like if you wanted it fully cooked and you were going to make one of these cobblers. It would be a little, the apples would be a little softer. And you could warm it up and keep it in a pan and then put it in the dishes and sprinkle it, sprinkle your dry uh, cobbler topping. Right, right over, right over the apples in the dishes. And you could warm this in the oven, or you could make this warm and this warm, put them together. I recommend vanilla ice cream on that. That's a delicious treat right there. So to make the um, topping, what you're going to do is you're going to put uh, your ingredients in the bowl. And this is all-purpose flour, salt, baking soda, brown sugar, rolled oats, um, cinnamon, and butter. And you put the dry ingredients in here first, and then you take cold pieces of butter that you've cut up into little pieces and a pastry blender. I, I think this is an apple cutter core. I'm not really sure, but I don't have a pastry blender, so I'm just going to use this. I think it'll work. Uh, it did work. It worked earlier. And what you're doing is it's called cutting the butter into the dough. Now, this is the way that you would make pie dough as well. And the reason that you do this... Um, rather than with your hands, is because you don't want the butter to get hot. The magic in pie crust and in cobbler topping comes from the pieces of fat being cold, and then when they go into the oven, the moisture releases steam and separates the parts of flour, in this case the flour and the oats and the baking soda, and makes it crispy and crunchy. In the case of um, pie dough, the steam separates the, the um, flour from the fat and causes that flakiness that you love um, in pie dough. Now, if I were making an apple crumb pie, and you're going to see when I go to this later, I would keep this raw like this, and I would sprinkle it over the top of my apple filling in my pie dough. But since this was cobbler topping, if you want to make it like this, you're going to go ahead and lay this out on a sheet pan in a 350 degree oven for probably 10 minutes, but keep an eye on it. You might want to stir it up a little bit from the pan so it doesn't burn on the edges and just cook it until it's this light, light brown color. You're going to smell that before it's done, but you know, don't put it on and go do chores. Be in the kitchen and keep an eye on it and you know, reset your timer if you have to, but you'll see this will, this will turn into this golden crunchy bits like granola almost but it has like delicious crumbly pieces of goodness cinnamon and butter all inside that so um, that's how you make the cobbler topping and that's the recipe that's from the restaurant specifically so we're going to put that up on our youtube channel and you'll have that for either cobbler or um, apple crumb pie so i'm going to move to the pie dough next because i want to get that in the oven so this was a pie dough that um this is my grandmother's recipe that i kind of altered uh, by, because I wanted to use that 
uh, sourdough starter. So in place of the water, I put the sourdough starter. Now she has this ridiculous pie dough recipe that has so much shortening and salt in it that I have cut the salt out a little bit over the years, but I guess back in her day, salty and greasy, but it's pretty, it's pretty no fail. Um, she was an amazing cook, my grandmother. She lived in, out in Ohio and uh, she was, she was well known for her pies and um, her leg of lamb was her claim to fame. So with pie dough, you, you roll from the center out to the edges and you, you move it so that it doesn't stick to the board. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna roll it um, about an inch and a half to two inches bigger than the pan that you're going to put it in because you wanna be able to make that really nice um, crimped edge. And I'm gonna show you how to do that even in this, even in this cast iron pan that I have here. I don't know how a baker like me doesn't have a pie plate, but maybe I'll hop over to the Pampered Chef website and pick up one of those really nice uh, ceramic pie plates that they have that they have over there. All right, so I, I worked it to the, to the edges, so it's pretty even all the way around, and I've got it pretty thin, maybe a little thinner up here. And it, you know, it didn't stick, didn't stick to the cutting board. I could have done this on the counter too, but I just wanted to go with the cutting board today. And then I'm going to show you how to get this into this pan. We're going to spray this pan, although it's pretty seasoned. I've had this cast iron pan for a long time. I'm just going to spray it for security. You could also go ahead, I guess, and put parchment down there, but I'm not, I'm going to risk it. I'm just going to go like this because what the heck. So oh, I'm going to slow down on this one. To get the, the um, pie dough into the pan, you use your rolling pin and you roll it up loosely, not, not tight, and then you go over to your pan and you roll it back across. Now this pan is, is deeper than a pie plate that's curved, so I'm gonna lift it up and make sure that it touches the bottom of this pan. I'm gonna go pretty rustic on this since I'm making this in a cast iron pan. I'm, I'm not gonna mind that the edges are, are wonky. I think it's gonna, I think it's gonna add to our finished product. But just to show, I'm gonna probably leave it like that, but I just wanna demonstrate, if you were making a regular pie, pie crust, you would roll this edge a little bit, like this, all the way around, to get a nice, even edge. Just just your pre, pre set up here. And you can borrow from your neighbor there, it's, it's okay, it's, it's pie, we're not entering a fair, we're gonna have this tonight. Um, all right, and then this is the movement that makes the crinkled edge. One thumb and one finger pushes the dough out, and one thumb and one finger pulls the dough in. So let me show you that really slow. One thumb and one finger pushes the edge out, and one thumb and one finger pulls the edge in. And I want to mention when I made this pie dough, I put it in the refrigerator. You could put it in for about an hour, so that's why it's holding this really nice it's not sticking to the edge and it's holding it. So this is real time. This is how I would do it <laughs> in the restaurant if I were making 400 pies like I have been known to make. Um, but I'm going to go back here one more time, flatten it out, and show slowly because everybody wants to know how to do this. So this thumb and this finger pushes out and this thumb and this finger pulls in. And you just go around lightly like that, like that, like that. If you can't master that technique, it's okay to do a fork technique. I've seen, you know, just mash around the edge, mash around the side. One more time here. Just go and smash it. That looks pretty too, perfectly acceptable. Um, I've seen people do things with tongs where they pinch it in equal distances. And then, like I said, just rustic over the side makes for that nice bubbly crust, you know, that you're going to have in there. So I'm going to go ahead and mix all this together for our pie. Delicious, delicious. Put it inside here. Ideally, I'd like to have a little bit more filling, but this was what would have fit into a regular pie shell. Um, but that's okay, we're just gonna heat it full of, make do with what we got. And then we're gonna take our crumb topping and we're gonna sprinkle that all over the top. You could also make an extra crust and do a lattice pie. My family likes crumb topping, so we're gonna do it this way. Now this is gonna go into a preheated, I've got 380 degrees on my oven back. 
and we're gonna let this cook and then later if you hop over to our YouTube channel you're gonna get to see what that looked like when it came out of the oven before we go though I have one I have one more thing done <laughs> um, I did also make a waffle recipe let me grab that so I took a waffle batter recipe that I had and I used two-thirds cup of that starter and I put that into here. The only thing that's missing is the egg white because when my dad used to make waffles on Sunday, we used to watch Sunday Adventure Theater and it was a big deal. He would get up with the girls, go down to the kitchen, my mother would stay in, he would make waffles and we would watch Sunday Adventure Theater. And if you're as old as I am, you remember what that show was, but like Errol Flynn was a pirate, you know, it was cowboys and Indians and they were really exciting and we would eat waffles. But his trick to waffles was where it calls for eggs, you separate the eggs and you put the yolk into the batter and you put the whites separate and you whip the whites up, light and fluffy, to a soft peak. This is going to aerate, further aerate the waffle. It does have baking powder, cinnamon, vanilla, but this action with the egg whites is going to give you a really fluffy, crusty waffle. Probably came out of my grandma's house too. <laughs> my cousins are all out there going, how'd you get all that stuff? Oh, there. <laughs> all right, so you can see if that's starting to get thicker and fluffy. And so we're adding air to all these whites. I've done it in the mix for two, but it's easier to clean up so it's going to be softer when I get done. A lot of the dough that I made over the past few days could have been made in the mixer, but it would have been, number one, really noisy, and number two, it's really simple to over-mix a dough. You don't want to do that, um, so that's why I like to do it with my hands, have the technique of doing it with my hands. So to add egg whites to a batter, half of it goes in first to lighten up the batter that you have, and then the other half follows, and you just fold it. You don't want to, you don't want to over stir this and break down all the air that you just created in your in your batter. Now, I like to mix oatmeal into this because I think it gives you like a little extra fiber in your waffle in the morning. Um, you got that? But I'm going to not do that because my kids don't eat it that way. And of course, one of them is still sleeping here at 2.30, so he's gonna get up and have breakfast. And then you just go to your preheated waffle iron, give it a shot of that, go into the center. And I make the batch ahead of time, and then I either put it in the refrigerator for them, or I cook them all, and then they can just break them into blocks and pop them into the oven in the morning. So, then you just close it. This is like $12 Target waffle maker. Now, the light will go on when it's ready, but I go by the steam doesn't come out anymore. You'll see it's going to start to steam, but then when it stops steaming, that's pretty much when um, your waffle is done. So, I bet you want to know what that waffle is going to look like too, but you're going to have to go to our YouTube channel, which will be posted when this video goes up. Um, and you can go over there and see what this waffle looks like when it comes out and what the apple pie looks like when that comes out. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments or send them to us by email, rgcatering at AOL.com. Tomorrow, we're going to make some chicken fajitas on the outside flat top to get out of the house. And I'm going to show you the tortilla batch, batch that I made using that sourdough starter. We're going to get six tortillas out of that, but the dough had to be made 24 hours in advance. So I made that this morning, and we're going to work on that tomorrow. And I'll show you to go how to make fajitas out on the uh, flat top grill. You can make them inside, but we just feel like getting outside <laughs> a little bit, and tomorrow might be a little bit nicer. Um, I also want to 
uh, mentioned that in the mornings I'm going to post on my Instagram page, which is Boss Lady Bees on Instagram. I'm going to post um, a little snapshot of what we're going to be doing each day, and uh, you can try and guess. I'm going to try to come on between the hours of 1 and 3. That seems like when we get our stuff together around here. Um, but I will post on that Instagram shop what time we expect to be on on any given day. Um, I want to thank everybody for joining us. It's been so much fun to present these videos. And I really appreciate all the comments, you know, and the love that you've all sent me. Um, but if you could really help us out, go to that YouTube channel and like and share and check that out and see if we could really get uh, something going with that. And then another idea that I had was we don't really have a name for whatever this is that we're doing here, what the segment is. So if people want to suggest uh, a name for what John and I could call whatever this is we're making, um, that could be kind of a fun thing for everybody. And then um, if anybody has any ideas or suggestions with technology, um, we'll take those too because I'm a chef I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to technology and if anybody wants to give us some hints or tips we'd love to have that too we're kind of working with what we have in our house try not to run out and buy equipment in, in today's you know times and um, we're also cooking with what we have here because I think that most of you at home are also cooking with what you have there so um, if you have a couple things in your pantry and you want to know what you should do with them hit me up in the comments and I'll give you uh, some suggestions of what you can make for your family with what you have in your cupboards. Thanks a lot. See you guys tomorrow.